Welcome to this episode of Metal Talk TV. As you can see, we are joined by Black Star Riders and Thin Lizzy frontman, Mr. Ricky Warwick. Ricky, how are you, sir? Hello, how's it going? <laughs> I'm doing very well. And how are you doing good. with this pandemic? I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing good. I mean, you know, it's it's the new norm now, sadly. It's been with us for over a year. And, uh, you know, I think... Uh, it's hard to remember what it was like before, but uh, you know, getting through it, there's light, seems to be light at the end of the tunnel finally, and uh, remaining positive, being busy, uh, food in the fridge, roof over my head, can't really complain, to be honest with you. Exactly. And your family's safe and well? Yes, thank you. Very, everybody's very, very good. Thank you. Good, good. How difficult has it been for you um, not being able to get out there and perform in front of an audience? It's frustrating um, because it's what I've been doing for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the road six months out of the year continuously. It's obviously a huge source of income for me, you know. Of course. Um, I, um, and, you know, when you have that sort of rug pulled abruptly from under your feet, I mean, who'd, who'd have thunk we'd ever, you know, yeah. something we just, something we did take for granted, going to a gig, there's always gigs, there's stuff exactly. going on. Boom. In a blink of an eye, it's not there anymore. Yeah. So I think when it kicked in, um, you know, you suddenly go, okay, this has happened. It's shit. What are we going to do? And then you realize it's bigger than any of us. We can't control it. Um, so I started going, okay, how am I going to adapt? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to find the positives? Uh, one thing I've learned with, with, with the age is, it's trying to find a positives in, in any situation. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's the only way forward. You know, if you if your negativity gets you nowhere. So I just went, okay, right. Okay. Let, let's look at the online streaming situation. Um, let's see if we can do something with that, which I have been. I'm just trying to adapt and, and, and try and stay positive. But yeah, it's a huge change for, for all of us. But, you know, for, for, touring, for touring musicians, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a real kick in the teeth. There's no, there's no two ways about it. I mean, you've also got uh, a situation where a lot of artists where it's not just them that's um, feeling this, it's obviously the crew and the oh, subsidiary yeah, issue, uh, yeah. subsidiary businesses as well. They've been really, really hard hit during this. It's brutal. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones because I, you know, as a solo artist, I can sing and play acoustic guitar and that's what I've been doing for 20 years. So it's I just need to flip open the computer and yeah, go online and I can do a show and I can I can earn some money. I mean, but for for the hard work, the, the guys that make it all happen, they don't have that outlet. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel for them. I mean, we've our crew's been decimated. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's just it's just a shame. We we we've had the same guys with us for years. Yeah, and you know, a lot of them had to go had to go and find um, other other ways of earning a living. Exactly. You know, because of it. And uh, I could get them without me going down that road. <laughs> the arts are just so underappreciated and underfunded and underrespected. It drives me fucking insane. Yeah. Um, because we, listen, you, you take all that out. Of the, where would we have been the last year without the arts? Yeah. Where where would we have exactly. been? Yeah. yeah, you know, it's and people go listen. The, the frontline workers and, and, and the doctors and the nurses and everybody is out there. Of course, they're the essential people, yeah. and they should be the they should be given a huge pay rise all around for the work that they do. Yeah. But the arts is essential. It's essential. It's essential to doubt. our well, our, our well yes. being and our, our mental state. Yeah. You know, um, and, and it should be treated as such. Shouldn't oh, be up so, there with those front, so, with those frontline guys, but yeah. it shouldn't be too far behind. You know what I mean? And, and it, it, it just drives me insane that it's just like, ah, you know, yeah, it's not real. It doesn't matter. Yeah, what they do is what, what they do isn't important. Okay, well, go and switch your TV off. Go <laughs> stop reading that book. Stop watching yeah. that movie. Stop playing that video game. Stop, stop, you know, stop listening to that band because yeah. that's all art. Yeah, you know, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, and yeah. obviously today you've had to cancel your tour for uh, in yeah. the March, start of April, which is entirely understandable. Obviously, yeah. you want to be in a position where you can come over, like you said, and. <laughs> and play to an audience who are a wanting to come and yeah, feeling safe to come of course and that that is obviously personally i think that's the best decision you could have made 
Oh, no, thank you. No, it's the only decision, really. Uh, you know, I want people to come to a show where all, the only thing they're thinking about is the show. Yeah. Is the, is the rock and roll. And not, not am I too, I'm not am I too close to that person beside me. No, am I, am I going to get sick after this? Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm be honest with you, I've no real interest in, in going, well, you know, you can do a drive-in show or you can, we'll put people in bubbles or we'll, we'll have six feet. Like, yeah. What's the point? You know, the point is the blood, sweat and beers and everybody getting together and exactly. shaking hands and making friends at the shows and getting sweaty and getting into the music yeah. and creating a vibe because that's what makes it special. So if you can't have that, I don't really want to, to do it until we have that back. Because everyone goes to a show with a single purpose. It's not like a yeah. football match or a sporting event where you're supporting one team or the other. Everyone sure. is there for the one thing. And that it's a, uni- one it's a thing unifying brings thing, everyone yeah. together. Absolutely, it's a and unifying it's en- en- entity, and it is very important. Certainly for for you know for rock and for for, for for rock and roll for you know a loud electric band. Absolutely, yeah. look, I mean, I could see it if I was doing an acoustic show and there's a table here and a table there. Sure. Okay, but even then, I just don't want people to be sitting there and going, you know, I'm okay. Am I too close to that guy? Is he? Yeah. He just sneezed. You know, or, or she just. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah. that's not fair on 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 the audience, you know, yeah. and it's not fair on the performers either. No, not at all. I mean, yeah. you mentioned your online shows. You've been doing these quite regularly. I've managed to catch up yeah. with you. And you've the one thing that you have done, which I thank you for, is you've kept the price down. You've of made course. it obviously you. people are under quite severe financial yeah. uh, straits yep. just now. And you realise that, and the stage obviously realise that as well. So it's an avenue to get your material out there and get you to still react to your fans in some some form. I, yeah, fantastic. yeah. Thank you. I mean, I know what it's like to be broke, and, and I know what it's like. I mean, I'm a, I'm a blue collar working class family, and 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 money was always a well, money was always tight when we were kids, you know. Um, you know, so everything that you earned was always a bonus. And look, people are hurting. Yeah. And um, yeah, I have to make a living, so I'm going to charge something. But I'm charging what? What am I charging? Four quid. It's the price of a, yeah. you know, a, a drink, a drink from a, a coffee from Starbucks. You know that, wow. that you get. Um, and also, I'm very conscious of not doing them one every week. Sure. You know, it's too much. Once a month, yeah. I think is okay, and yeah. and people people can stick that four quid away and go. I've yeah. got a Ricky Warwick gig. I want. I'll stick that four quid. I'll not buy my cappuccino today. I'll, I'll go and see Ricky Warwick. You know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I'm I'm the same mentality. And you know, I think you know the the people that come to my shows and, and come to see the bands that I'm in. Most of them are very hardworking and have that that work blue collar mentality. You know, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I totally respect that. And I totally respect that I'm nothing without them. Yeah. So they need to be treated with respect and oh, with care yeah. and, and with, and with, un, with understanding. And, um, you, know, you know, hopefully I do that, you know, and it's not people go, well, actually, if you do these online shows and, you're, you know, blah, 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 you must be, be raking a lot of money in from that. They've been great. I do okay. You know, I'm not going to lie. I've got a lovely fan base. I'm great. But, you know, I invest the money and I bought some really good recording. You know, I've got into it now. I'm re- First, I was a bit like, I'm not too sure about this. I'm not too sure this is for me. Now I'm getting, now I've got the Zoom, I've bought the Zoom, you know, the, you know yeah. the, the lights and all that. And I've really got into it. But also, you know, the, the, the platform I use takes 20% of, sure. of what I earn. Yes. Then I have my management commission on top of that as well. Yeah. Then you do, you do your top supporters. Then you're doing three four $400 a month in mail outs to the, to, yeah. to the people that have been the top supporters. So, there's costs involved in everything, yes. but it's a way for me to stay connected to the people that support me and support my music and vice versa. And that's yeah. what's important. That's the most important thing out of all this. That support that you've been shown has been proved with the release of When Life Was Hard and Fast. It looks, fingers crossed, that it's going to be, without doubt, your first top 40 solo album in the UK. I reviewed it for Metal Talk. Uh, absolutely adored it. I thought it was a fantastic Oh, album. thank you so much. Thank um, you. And I said in my review that 
you deserve this success because oh, thank you. you've been working, like you said, working non-stop for 30 yeah. years now. Yeah. And it's about time people actually <laughs> woke up and went, hold on, who is this guy? Right, right. But th there are so many different facets to Ricky Warwick, mm -hmm. which, which I enjoy. Yeah, you know, thank you. And, and you've covered pretty much everything in this album. Yeah, I think so. So with Keith Nelson as your producer and, and co-writer, how did the two yous meet? Uh, we met, it was all thanks to Damon Johnson. Okay. It's all thanks to Damon Johnson leaving Blackstar Riders. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, absolutely. Much as Damon's my bro and I love him the bits. Yeah. Uh, Damon, as we know, Damon left Blackstar Riders in 2018 and obviously there's a void there for a guitar player. And, and you know, it was one of those things that just, it just worked out really well. It was a bizarre situation. Um, Richard Fortas from Guns N' Roses, who was in Thin Lizzy with me for a short while, is a really yeah. good friend of mine. So I called up Richard and I was like, bro, we need a guitar player. I know you're kind of busy with this wee band you're in called Guns N' Roses and you might not, you, you might not be up for it. And I said, can you think of anybody? And he went, Keith Nelson's just left Buck Cherry. Do you know Keith? And I went, well, I know who he is and I know, we, yeah. I know Buck Cherry, but I said, I've never met the guy. He said, well, he's in LA. Yeah. He said, here's his phone number. He said, he's a great guy. You know, obviously he's a hell of a guitar player. Give him a buzz. I think he could be your man. So I thought, brilliant, great, you know, and of course I go check out Keith and he looks great and he plays great. Yeah. So I called him up and I was like, I made a quick chat on the phone. I said, look, is this something you're interested in? And he said, yes. Uh, I, I, I said, he said, let's meet up. So we met in Barney's Beanery, West Hollywood, 10 o'clock one morning. And he walks in and he looks straight in the eye and he goes, I'm not your guy. <laughs> Without and judging I, I went, by your looks. I know, I, that's the first thing out his mouth. And I went, I sort of went, well, what the fuck are you doing here then? We, why, why are we meeting? Why can you just tell me this on the phone? He said, look, man, he said, I love your band. He said, I love Blackstar Riders. He said, I think they're brilliant. He said, I, I left Buck Cherry because I just don't want to tour anymore. I just don't want to do the six months away from the family. Yeah. I'm done. He said, I've got my own studio now. I'm getting into production. I'm getting into writing. He said, that's, that's where my focus is. And that's where I'm at. He said, but I wanted to give you the respect that you deserve, you know, and, yeah. and, and meet you in person and tell you face to face. So, you know, I thought I'm all about that. So I thought that was brilliant. So anyway, we end up getting a, get a bit of breakfast and coffee and we're chatting. And of course we hit it off. We're both the same age, you know, working, working class boys. He grew up in Pennsylvania, me, Belfast, Straven, you know, the whole thing. Um, same, same, lo same love of music, same bands, love of vintage guitars, Suddenly I'm getting on with this guy like a house on fire. I'm going, damn, it's a real shame he's not going to be the guy because I really like this yeah. guy. Yeah. And he says to me, he says, look, why, why don't you just come over to the studio tomorrow and let's see if we can, uh, let's just, just write, let's write a song. Hmm. And I said, yeah, that, sounds, that, sounds, that sounds cool. So the next day I went over and I had the idea for the song Fighting Hard. I had the, had the lyrics and I had the kind of the verse riff together, but didn't have the rest of the song finished. So we walked in and I played him. I said, he goes, this is great. We started working on it. We finished it, did a demo of it, left the studio that night, went back home, listened to the demo, and went, this is fucking great, man. And that was a really good day. I said, I really like this cat. I said, you know, there's the chemistry there. Listened to it some more over the weekend. And then on Monday, I called him up and I went, Keith, I said, I have more than enough ideas for a solo record at the minute. I said, what about you and me co-producing it and, and, and finishing it together? And he went, let's go. And that was back in 2018. So I've sure. not really known Keith all that long, but he's, I, I call him one of my dearest friends now. You know, we've, yeah. we've become so close yeah. because we've worked, we worked so um, intensely together on the record. Yeah. And so that's how that came out of it. And, then, you know, because Keith didn't take the Black Star Riders job, we, get, we ended up getting Christian Martucci, who's sure. unbelievable. Yeah. You know, so it was a yeah. double whammy. It was a win win yeah. all around, really, you know. How difficult was it for you? to be sitting on this album for so long, <laughs> knowing what it was. Obviously, well, think... Black Star Riders <laughs> had to come out first and you had to sure. do the tour. Of course. And that's, that's your main occupation these days. But you, you've also got a parallel solo career going. Yeah. But you knew right from the start that this was going to be the release date. It was going sure. to be early 2021. Absolutely, yeah. You must have been talking um, at the bit. Uh, people know, because of... Cause... 
you know, of my work ethic, you can see I'm, I'm a very impatient person. I don't, I don't, I don't do, I don't do well when I'm bored. I yeah. don't function well when I've got nothing to do. Um, you know, the thought of taking a holiday and lying on a beach terrifies me. You know, because uh, I, I, I just one of these people. I just can't switch off. You know, and that's just the way I am. And I'm, I'm okay with it. Don't have a problem with it. That's just how I'm wired. You know. Um, it was good in the fact that having an album in the can and knowing you've written it and knowing it's good and it's done is a really lovely feeling because the stress of writing it and finishing it isn't yeah. is gone. So on that on that point, on on that sort of part of it, that's great. The other part is yes, I'm impatient. I'm dying for everybody to hear it. I'm dying to get a reaction. I'm dying to get it out there. Um, I'm very good. At, uh, um, I've learned over the years at walking away. So it wasn't a case of like I would I would go, oh man, you know, I've, 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 we should go back in and re-record that song, or we should tweak this, or the guitar's not loud enough and that. But I don't like my vocal on that. I've learned very much that when you make a record, you're capturing where you're at at that time, and that's how it should be, and that's how it should be viewed. So you walk away from it. Because if I went in to record when life was hard and fast right now, it wouldn't sound the same. It would be a different yeah. sound of record. Because my, my head, I'm not, my, you know, my head's in a different space than it was two years ago. Yeah. You know, I may be playing guitar. So that's, I've learned to realize what you're doing in making a record is you're, in the essence of it's capturing where you're at at that moment. And once you accept that, then it's okay. You can wait. So you can say, hand what made it, sorry, what, sorry. I think what made it hard, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, what made it hard was last year, we obviously were supposed to be really busy with Black Star Riders. Sure, yes. On the road. And the fact that we weren't, and I've been at home for a year. Yes. Yes, that's hard, because you, you know, you're know you going, oh man, I can't wait for this record to come out, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So I didn't have BSR to take my mind off it, as it were. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So you can say, hand on heart, that you did not put that album on in the house or in the car and think, Oh God, I wish I'd done that a bit different or oh we could write another yep. couple. It was done. It finished in April oh, 2019 I, and it was I, done. I've always always think we can write another couple. I think that's <laughs> I, that's something that I, yeah, I listen, I put it on and I can sit and listen to it and go, I really like this record. I'm really damn proud of it and it's great. I've already moved on to the next one. Yes, the next I'll one. The next one. Facebook the, Live on Friday. You know, yeah, then the, the next one's written. The next one's written, and we're we're all the Keith and I are already making the demos on it. Yeah. And and that's the way I am. I think with everything, it's like okay, that's done. It's done. It was. It's great. I'm really really proud of it. What's next? You know, because obviously you had the Black Star Riders album coming out in September 2019. And right. then you you tried to get the tour going, which is the way these things work. Sure. And obviously. What happened happened, so yeah. you couldn't fulfil those those dates because of the COVID. And you're sitting there going, "Oh, what do I do? What do I do?" And obviously, uh -huh. you, you went down the road to the stage, and and like you said, you've already recorded or got the demos for a new album. Is yeah. there any dates for recording or for that? For, for Black Star Riders, yes, we're looking at going in. Um, I mean, we should have some news about Black Star Riders pretty soon. I think that we're going to announce, but we should we should be going in end of summer. Excellent. That's what, what, what we're looking yeah. at again because uh, geographically we're all over the place in Black Star Riders. We yeah. need to wait again till it's safe to fly everybody. And yeah. we'll, we'll record in LA again. We'll use Jay Rustin again that did another State of Grace. Yeah, uh, that's 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 a dead cert. We've already agreed that, but we just need to make sure it's safe for Scotty to fly over and Christian to fly yeah. down and Chad to fly in. Chad's in Pennsylvania on the other side of the country. Yeah. So once we can all get together safely in a studio, we'll we'll make a start. I mean, it's sitting waiting. The demos are done. Yeah. Um, one or two songs we're still kind of working on, but I'd say there's 15, 15 solid songs Excellent. there. Excellent. You know, re ready to go because I, the, we could go all right. We'll we'll, we'll go back out and we'll re-promote in our state of grace, but it's gone. Yes, yeah. it'll be two. It'll be yeah. two years. It's just, and you know, people's attention span is nothing now, as, as you know. When it's just, yeah. you don't have the the luxury of the longevity of an album that you used to have twenty years ago, where you sure. could put an album out and you could just keep touring it until the wheels came off. Yeah. You know, it, it's almost like back. It was in the seventies. Oh, you almost need to put a record out every year, every eighteen months now. Yeah, you yeah, know? definitely. Which is the way it was back in back in our day. You know. Oh, wait a minute. 
So who came up? Was it yourself or Keith that came up with the suggestions for the special guests on? It was, it was it was me. It, it, it was, was all me. They're all yeah. They're all they're all friends of mine. Um, you know, so you know because I've been working. They're friends of mine. I've been working with them for many years. I've I've worked in you know collaborate with them on some of their stuff and vice versa. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know the the beauty of the solo record is you're not going to piss anybody off because there's there's no band, there's nobody to annoy. You know, if you want somebody to play a guitar solo, your guitar player is not going to go. Well, that's my gig. Why yeah. why is he playing my solo? You know, because there's no band there. You know, it's 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 me. It's it's only me. So you can be as narcissistic as you want. And I love having one of the one of the many reasons I like doing the solo stuff is because I can work with whoever the hell I want to. And it's interesting and, it, and creates different situations. I love be, I love the band thing. I love the the whole gang mentality of Black Star Riders and and what we have is is amazing. Um, but you know, clearly that's not enough for me. I need I need to do I need to do <laughs> other stuff as well. You know, so that, I'm very did, lucky. I'm very lucky. Did you have the songs set out and say right? Andy, Andy could do the solo and that. Luke could do the solo and that. I'll ask Joe to sing back in vocals. I think so. You know, when we when songs were finished and we heard them back, then it was a it was sort of me going to Keith, like, let me get Joe to sing on this. It would be great. Look, you know, with, with Joe being such a, a close friend of mine and such a sort of a mentor to me over the years and having obviously produced a couple of my solo records and the whole connection with me with touring with Def Leppard and, and yeah. the whole thing there. I can't really conceive doing a solo record without Joe being involved, being involved somehow. because because I'm always sending him my ideas. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And he's always giving me advice. Um, so it's just an, it's, I always want Joe involved in it some ways. And plus, he's a he's a hell of a musician, a hell of a singer, and it's just great to have him on there. And then you know, with, with like I'd rather be hit with Andy. I, I was actually I'd actually been over in Ibiza working with Andy Taylor in his place on some solo stuff, solo songs for his solo record, which is coming out later this year. So I'm, I was kind of going. Well, we're working on it. I was going, I'm about to do a solo record. Will you return the favor, Andy? And he's like, yeah. of course, send it up. You know, so it's just, it's really chilled. It's really laid back. You know, I mean, even on the last sort of, you know, the last record when Patsy Klein with, with Ginger from A Wild Hearts playing on the track with Nathan from Snow Patrol. Yeah. I'm just very blessed. And, you know, 30 years of doing this, of rock and roll, I've forged many, many great friendships with some fantastic musicians. And uh, I really admire and love what they do. Sure. So you know why not? Why not ask them to come in and play? You know, I mean that's obviously testament to your character that you've 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 met these people. I would say Luke and Andy, especially from way back. I mean, Andy yeah. produced Soul Destruction, and of course that wasn't last week. <laughs> and you're still very close friends now. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that, that's fantastic. It must be great to flick through your Thank phone you. book and go, oh, there's. <laughs> And it, it, it's definitely a bit surreal, man. You know, it's uh, it's it's nice, you know. To I mean, I, I definitely do still get turn get the fanboy moments. Even these people yeah. are my friends now. I will be sitting sometimes with and Joe, who I've known for years, and being the best man at his wedding. I still be out with Joe one night, and I still go, "That's Joe Elliott from Def Leppard," you know. And I have to sort of pull myself together and go, oh, yeah, "You know, you know, you know." Before I kind of go, "Oh, really?" You know. Um, how, and it's how shocked you know, were you to be asked to be Joe's best man? Um, I, I, I was very honoured. I kind of knew it was coming because okay. at that moment, that moment in time, Joe lives in Dublin and I was yeah. living in Dublin, and and we were never we were, we were we were never at each other's sight, sights. You know, we were hanging out two or three nights a week. We were working on my solo record. I was opening for Def Leppard. I was yeah. up at his place watching the football. You know, two or three nights yeah. a week. We were we were buddy. We were tight. We were rear, we still are, but we just yeah. obviously live miles apart now. So. It was a huge honor for me, um, you know, and uh, I was sort of with him when him there when his him and his wife sort of got together and I saw that whole romance blossom and yeah. you know so it, it was it was lovely to be asked you know um, I don't think I was entirely surprised but I was very honored very honored. You said that that was the most terrifying gig you've ever played. It, it is. <laughs> it is. I'll never. I'll never. I'll never I'll never beat that one. I've done some terrifying gigs, and I've, you know, I mean, walking out for that first Def Leppard show in Vegas, the first time yeah. in front, of, you know, armed with just an acoustic guitar and in an exactly. arena in front of thirteen thousand people, is pretty fucking terrifying. <laughs> but, but, but giving that speech and just sort of looking up, you know, from from behind the 
the sort of table and seeing all the all the alumni at the, at the wedding was definitely a moment where you know you can see you can sort of see your hero sitting like this and like oh yeah. god you know <laughs> yeah it's forever yours to keep we're all searching for the answer there won't be an Place that I look. You're always in the last place that I look.